Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today's video is going to be a little bit odd and different, I guess. Um, simply because of the fact that I decided to watch Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron the other night, uh, which is a favorite childhood movie of mine. I actually saw it in theaters in 2002 when it came out and I was just six years old and it was an amazing, like, life-changing movie. I know as silly as that sounds, but it was just really special because it's, like, one of the very few animated movies about horses that I can even think of that was super well done and depicted some of the violence that is enacted against them. Which I found very interesting because a lot of horse movies that we watch, with the exception of, like, Black Beauty, kind of look at a lot of training as like a necessary means to an end and while a lot of them do target on how a lot of people mistreat horses they don't necessarily go about it in the same way that the spirit movie did um and something in particular that stood out to me especially now but also back in the day was how the u.s army treated spirit once they caught see how wild he is when I'm done with him. But those clips really spoke to me, especially now as an adult, because I found it really interesting how much they model real life treatment of horses that is defended and accepted. And I found this particularly interesting because of the fact that a lot of people growing up, like in my age range or a bit older, maybe even younger if they watched it after it came out, grew up consuming that type of content about spirit and like black beauty and stuff and watching these horses on tape be mistreated and resonated with the horse not the villains who mistreated them so it's interesting to me to see the number of people that have now grown up to be the type of villain that is depicted in these movies acting violence against the horses well, i thought it might be cool to do a video where i draw parallels between the spirit movie and legitimate training videos of horses that I found online. Mostly, if not completely, on TikTok because that seems to be where people have absolutely no shame. Drawing the parallels between the treatment of spirit in that movie and the treatment of real life horses now, having things happen to them that lots of people defend. Because many of these videos that I saved on TikTok had thousands of views and thousands of likes and a lot of comments defending what's going on in the video and saying that the horse horses are rank and that they needed this to get better or to learn how to tie or to do this that or the other thing there's always a justification which is what i think is so concerning before we get there this is one of the new pullovers from my new uh, retro inspired product line that i just released and this is also one of my beanies that i released and as you can see unintentionally it's like almost a perfect match in color and i also have a tan beanie that like almost identically matches this basically i'm a genius because i did it by accident but anyways this is like one of my favorite product lines that I have ever released and it's like the first full product line that I've actually done and developed and created uh, so if you're interested in checking that out you can do so on my milestone equestrian.ca website on the shop milestone page the first clips of spirit when the humans come in they are like chasing him down and trying to rope and catch him because they look at him and they go wow what a beautiful stallion we would like to have him um and what I found interesting about these initial clips, looking at them now, but essentially the capture clips are the method of wearing a horse down by chasing and chasing and chasing them and just applying pressure until you can finally trap them or they finally give up. And then once they have him roped and he starts fighting back against the ropes, they rope both sides of his neck. So one person is holding on each side, they rope a leg uh, so that he can't like walk without them deciding to trip him. So if he tries to duck out, they'll trip him. Um, and that type of method is something that you see, again, used with horses who do not want to be around people and who are labeled as rank. Uh, so I found all that interesting because, again, 
in the film with all of the soundtracks that are in the background and just the general vibe of the movie it is very clear that you're not supposed to be in support of this happening and that it's a sad devastating thing and I would believe that even people watching it who do those things to horses would kind of be sucked into that because of the environment set by the movie creators. Okay, so now the main clips that I wanted to talk about and show you are the ones once they get him to arrive to the facility that he will be trained at, the U.S. Army base. Uh, he arrives there and they promptly decide this wild Mustang who we literally just caught needs to get shoes on right now. So they put him in stocks, like a wooden stocks, which is essentially a little chute that you can trap horses in to do vet procedures. It's not necessarily always a bad thing, but in this type of circumstance, it's not done for the horse's well-being. It's done for the benefit of the people so that they can do what they would like to do to him faster. So... He's put into these stocks, they start picking at his feet, um, the farrier does, and he fights back the entire time. So as you can see, the horse isn't actually being bad. He's just doing a number of things to evade the situation that he's been forcibly put in, but the people are all perceiving this as bad and getting exceedingly more frustrated, just like what we see in training. Uh, so what they, their answer to this is just to continue trapping him more and applying more and more force. And if they portrayed this a little bit more realistically, what we would see is a bunch of like rope abrasions, rub marks, bruising, open wounds, like little sores all over him from the amount of struggle that he's had, uh, through being roped and put in this situation. But since it's a kid's movie, they decided to not traumatize children. But that's the reality you're looking at. If you tried to do all this stuff in real life, you would be injuring the animal and there would be signs of the fight on the body of the animal. So. And again, like even the name of spirit, the whole movie is about a spirit that cannot be broken and the human desire to break down and wear down the spirit of horses or other creatures that they want to exercise dominance over and use for any number of different things for their own purpose and another interesting parallel that i found drawn in this movie is the parallel of spirit to little creek um the indigenous man who ultimately saves spirit from the situation that he was placed in and both of them are captives from the u.s army um they're both tied to the post no water no food for three days and they're both treated like they don't deserve any type of respect. And yet the humans the with the army want respect from both of them and don't like it when they feel disrespected by their evasive behavior that's with the intent of escaping. So another parallel that I would like to draw where most of these parallels are going to be drawn is when they decide that they want to break spirit to ride. Um, and they use the term breaking, which a lot of people still do use, and I don't think the term itself is inherently bad, but when you use it within this context, the context is very much about breaking the animal spirit. Um, and what they do is he just continues piling on rider after rider onto this horse and then putting them in a chute and then they let him out and he bucks all these riders off and... By the time the horse realizes that he's able to throw all these riders, he starts getting a little bit cocky and like kind of playing into it, which a real horse obviously wouldn't do. Um, but he realizes he has their number and this pisses the colonel, the super villain of this movie. It pisses him right off. And when he decides to get on, he's like, fetch me my spurs. And then they go and they get his spurs and he jumps on spirit and He's like the one rider that Spirit can't completely easily throw, but then he's still not successful in forcing Spirit to do what he wants. So then his next solution after spurring, whipping, and trying to yank this horse around is to tie him to the patient's post. They don't call it that, but that's what it is for three days. Noticing parallels here. If you've seen anything else I've posted about the patient's post and stuff. Anyways, three days, no food, no water. The point of this is to continue breaking down his spirit because he's going to be hungry, he's going to be thirsty, he's going to be bored, he's going to feel trapped. And this is what happens in real life horses, is it wears down their spirit to the point where they shut down because they realize they cannot change their situation. And then they start to let things happen to them that they otherwise would not let happen to them. <laughs> Yeah. 
You see, gentlemen, any horse can be broken. <laughs> Move along, Mustang. <laughs> And so many equestrians view this as a victory when really it should be a deep sadness because you've only achieved that victory through robbing an animal of their autonomy and overall happiness and scaring the crap out of them. But it's viewed as a victorious thing because you finally established dominance over this animal and now you can make it do what you want it to do. There is no regard for the safety of the horse in this. There's no regard for the safety of humans in this. There's no regard for whether or not this horse injures himself and becomes unusable for what they're trying to get him used for. And the same is seen in all of these different types of training practices in other areas of the real life horse world. They don't care about safety in the pursuit of trying to secure what they want to do with the horse. If the horse gets injured in that process, the injuries are then blamed on the horse because they'll go, oh, well, if he just settled down and didn't fight so much, he wouldn't get injured. And they fail to consider that we're literally dealing with flight animals whose entire MO is trying to evade discomfort and fear. So you can't blame them for dangerous situations that you put them in when you fail to acknowledge that nature. But people do because they don't want to accept any accountability for the role that they play in terrifying these horses and ultimately getting these severe reactions from them. So anyways, now that I've shown you those clips, let me show you the parallels that I found that model the clips. And I'm going to play the clips side by side because it is such a stark, obvious comparison to the point where it makes me wonder if someone on the writing committee and like the screenplay development of the Spirit movie was a horse girl who was watching or boy or they or them. Like I just mean horse girl, you know, like the horse girl trope, like a horse obsessed person who saw this stuff ongoing with horses and wanted to portray it in a kid's movie in a way that's not going to be too traumatic to children, but will make a really good point because it is just so exact. Like literally, I, like it wasn't even hard to find clips that model what happened in Spirit. It took me five minutes of searching for all of these clips. So what does that say about us as horse people? These clips might be disturbing to some and if you don't wanna view them, don't because they'll model what I just showed you with the cartoon footage. I'm just going to voice over the TikTok songs. My dad said, son, that's a motherfucking mare. I'm going to blame the horse's gender on the reaction that I caused because I'm a cowboy. Yeah. I don't know the rest of the lyrics because I hate country music and I hate the bullshit that is this horsemanship. Oh, yeah. Hey. I'm gonna take my horse down the hardened road. I'm gonna fight it until they can't fight me no more. I'm gonna take my horse down the hardened road because I don't know that there's an easier way. Thunder, na 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 na. Thunder, na 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 na. I'm causing a storm cause I can't freaking train. Would rather break a leg than learn how to train. Roping all them legs, pulling this horse onto the ground. Thunder, na 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 na. And then when the storm clears, I call it calm. Because I don't know what learned helpless is. Can't tell it from my mom.
wanted to jump in here to quickly say i'm not saying that all of these horse people get off from abuse but they're all engaging in industry normalized techniques that are rooted in treating horses poorly and they've been enabled in doing so because of how normalized it is in the industry because it was viewed as blatantly unacceptable people couldn't get away with it to the degree that they do so all of these people can become better horse trainers and can learn how to treat horses better they just aren't in these clips but anyways, those are the parallels that I've found between Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron and real life horse training. And I'm sure you can see the, the similarities if you've watched to this point. You can see what I'm talking about. So on closing, what I want to say is that as a community of horse people, all of us need to reevaluate what we are doing and what we condone and how we want to be portrayed in the media. Because if movies like Black Beauty and Spirit continue coming out, and hopefully there's going to be more of them because not much has really changed, if anything, it makes us look bad. It does. It makes all of us look bad. And this is why so many people outside of the horse world thinks that working with horses in any capacity is abusive to them. Because there are so many depictions where the horse's autonomy and overall opinion of stuff does not matter. And a lot of us say we love horses until we're blue in the face and that our horses are partner, our best friend, etc. But calling it a partnership is a bit rich when you consider the fact that 50% of the partnership, the horse, never actually gets to say no. So they don't have a say. They're only really involved and valued in that partnership when they are doing what the rider wants them to do in a lot of cases. And in that case, that should be called a dictatorship because that's what it is. If they don't want to participate and you have to force them to participate through any number of like ropes, harsh bits, training gadgets, spurs, whipping them, etc., that is a clear sign that they don't want to participate. And it's not to say that every single piece of equipment ever used on a horse is bad, but the manner in which we have historically used spurs, harsh bits, whips, it's all for the purpose of establishing control and using the fear that the horses feel towards aversive techniques to control them and make them what we want to do what we want to do. And it's created a culture in our horse world where horses are essentially just puppets that we bring out and we play with when we feel like it. But then after we're done with them, they go and exist a shell of a life. They're a shell of an animal. They're not allowed a personality. They're not allowed any spirit. And in their time off, we often keep them locked up in little stables away from other horses and not able to actually live a full life how they're intended to. And it's devastating. It's really sad to watch. And I know that a lot of horse people, even ones that are actively doing stuff like this, it's not their intention to have it impact the horses how it actually does. They actually want that partnership with, with their horse, but they've been led so far astray by role models and trainers and just like industry standards and normals that they don't even realize how wrong it is. Spirit serves as a really, really good example of how strong this cognitive dissonance is because we have all these horse-loving children who consumed content like that as youngsters and then still became the exact person that they didn't want to become. And I say this from experience. I watched Spirit at six years old, just a year or two after I started riding. And I still ended up whipping horses, using harsh bits, getting mad at them and using my frustration as a reason to justify what I was doing to them. I did all of these things, even though I was repulsed by it in watching the movie Spirit and Black Beauty. And I resonated with the horses in both of those and felt that the people hurting them were the villains. I still became the villain in the lives of the horses around me because that is how ingrained and indoctrinating this type of mindset is in the horse world. And it's never going to stop unless we start calling it out for what it is and really working to change it. Like it has been work to change my view of the horse world and to alter how I handle horses. Every single day is work and you really have to like dive into that mindset change and really be committed to change it, especially in the beginning where it's the hardest to do because you wanna bounce back to what's easy and comfortable and doing things differently initially feels impossible because you've never been told that it is possible. So it's really hard to do, but it's what we need to do if we actually wanna incite mass change. and. 
honestly, if we change these things and we start to give horses more say and more fulfilling lives and more fulfilling training, if they perform as well as they do for us by force, if we can motivate them to do the same things by mutual interest, their performance is going to be through the roof. If they're willing to perform under duress to the degree that they have been able to all of these centuries that we've used them. And that is something I firmly believe and it makes me really sad because, like I said, a lot of the people who are doing things to these horses don't actually want to be the villain that they are being. They've simply become what they've been taught to be and what they've been encouraged to be. And there is such a normalized concept in the horse world where you're like, you're rewarded and complimented for being tough and gritty and like getting after the horse and showing them who's boss. And it creates a value system where these things are, they feel valuable to you because you get kind words from people around you and you get rewarded for it, which makes it more likely for you to do it again. So there's a reward system on our side that encourages these toxic behaviors, but also when we don't engage in them, because a lot of kids do initially say no to these things, we're punished for it and we're told that the horse is going to learn bad habits if we don't do it, that we have to get off the horse and we can't participate in the lesson if we don't do it, and all of these other things that make us less likely to do the nice thing and be the kind person towards the horse because we're deliberately encouraged not to be that way and then we're blamed for any bad behaviors the horse may exhibit after that fact if we don't get after them despite the fact that a lot of this punishment actually creates these bad behaviors that people are trying to fix because that's never actually addressing the underlying issue that's me bringing spirit into real life um like a true textbook horse girl probably would so i guess i'll own it and that's just some food for thought on reconsidering how we do things because honestly it's not even about completely uprooting everything as you know it but it's about starting to draw lines and set boundaries for how far you're going to let your frustrations escalate and what you're going to enable in your own riding and those who are around you caring for your horse because there's a lot of research out there now that shows us how far wrong we've gone and how it impacts horses and how much better they function when we adopt different types of training techniques so the the research is there the proof is there it's all there and it's just ultimately up to us now to have like the mindset change that we need to and sit in the discomfort that is completely uprooting and changing the way you were taught to view horses and sitting in the discomfort knowing that it's going to be for the best in the future and that's truly what I hope to see people do because when I talk about these things, it's not about making people feel like the villain so much as pointing out something for what it is while understanding that everyone has the capacity to change. So even if you've been the villain at one point, it's up to you for what you do for your future. Like you can rewrite your future. You can change things. You don't have to stay being that person. So I always look for the capacity to change in people and even people I really don't agree with, I still think that they have it in them to possibly change if they so choose to. And if they do make the change to do things more ethically, I'm not going to hold any ill will towards these people because that's what I would want people to do for me because I was able to change and I was able to reevaluate how I did things and grow. And if people held me to the same standard as what I used to do, forevermore it wouldn't be fair because that is not who I am anymore I have completely changed altering how I handle horses has exponentially helped my mental health and that is a fact um and I think a lot of other people might find it to be that way too because it helps you understand yourself better when you start to learn things through a behavioral science science realm and you start to be more empathetic and kind towards yourself and the mistakes you make in addition towards the horses. So if you grew up watching Spirit, reevaluate how you handle your horse and ask yourself sometimes if when you're frustrated, the kernel comes out in you because that is the bad evil side of you that you should be working to change. And honestly, everyone in the horse world for the most part has probably been the kernel at least once because we are quite literally taught to. So it's up to us to change that and change the status quo. And the more of us who set an example and speak out against this, the more change we can bring to organizations, other horse people, our peers, upper level professionals, and so on. It all starts with just talking and pointing out that something is wrong. 
And if we don't do this, then it makes it very easy for people to quietly continue doing what they're doing and doing what is most profitable and what is easiest. And that is what's going to happen. The organizations are not going to change much, if anything, until the demand is there. So we need to pressure them and we all need to talk more and point this out because I think the younger generation has a lot to bring to the table in terms of positive welfare change. So let's do it, girls and got it so let's do it guys so let's do it let's get her done we can do it we can the power is in our hands and i truly believe that the more people who talk and share information the more change we'll see that's something that i've seen happening and i think that change is coming it's just up to us if we want to participate in that change and i believe in all of you so anyways, have a great day. Don't be like the colonel. So anyways, have a great day. Don't be like the colonel and ask yourself how your horse would feel if they talked to spirit. Would they agree with him and want to escape with him? Or would they be like, no, nah, my owner's pretty chill. You should meet them because they're not as terrible as the people you met. Really think on that because it's really easy to say how much your horse likes work and likes you when you're the one calling the shots on what their perception is and you're not actually looking at, at it through a horse lens and what is likely to actually be comfortable, safe feeling and happy for them.